Story Buzzers. I'm Jay. And I'm Gabby. Welcome to Banta Central. I hope you're excited about it as we are. Here's some juicy bits coming up in the show. Ain't that right, Jake? Yeah, and we're going to meet rising rap star Edmund and talk about his new video. Have you seen his new video, Jake? Yeah, it's deadly. And Meg called down to the School of Rock to see how the rockers along for their doing. But first... Brian called down to the Attic House to see how the Attic staff and members are doing on their new project. Let's go check that out. Hello, I'm Brian Doyle, ready to make sure to meet some of the students and staff who are going to uh, uh, in the Attic. Let's go inside for you. Hello, I'm here with Leanne, Darren and Katie, ready to ask them some questions about Attic U Club. So tell me, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, youth club? Um, well, the attic is a great place where like, loads of different students can come up and they can chill and relax and have a good time with their friends. But the attic also has loads of different courses, like tech space and drug and alcohol awareness. Thank you. Uh, what is Hype? Hype is a, it's a youth festival run once a year. Uh, it's a day long youth festival. And the whole point of it really is that it's a safe place for teenagers. Uh, there's no alcohol or drugs permitted on, in the venue, but they can still see like some of their favourite acts and like Irish bands and DJs. And then there's disco tents and lots of fun things too. And tell me, what type of things will be going on in Hype uh, 2015? <laughs> Lots of music as well. Again, yeah. there will be face painting, and some castles, and um, disco time, rock time. Yeah, I don't know. Food, food, food. Mm -hmm. food. food is the main thing. Oh yeah. Well, what is a uh, headline act? Headline acts. Uh, I don't think any acts have been revealed yet. So we'll be looking at the Facebook page, and I say it will be revealed shortly. What do you mostly enjoy? About hype? Um, I think it's just, disco tent is great fun. Uh, with friends, like just having a bit of a dance and stuff like that. But then the acts, the music acts are brilliant every year. Like they're people, some of them are people you wouldn't hear of, but they're great. Like, they're good at playing music. Yeah, and the ones from the youth factor that might be friends with, you can see them perform and be proud of them. Hello Brian, you're very welcome to the Attic. The Attic was uh, started in 2007, uh, here up in, uh, upstairs in the Temperance Hall. Uh, we cater for uh, all secondary school uh, young people between 12 and 18 years of age. Um, with the ninth secondary school, I think it was nine or eleven, so I may stand corrected on that, uh, schools in the county. Is there money coming out? We have over 2,000 young people registered with us uh, that we would interact on an annual basis uh, here in the attic. Why do you have this for the most uh, 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 We try to hold a disco uh, uh, once a month, so it's a, it's a place for. Uh, a safe place for young people to come and enjoy themselves without uh, having uh, under the influence of alcohol. It's a drug and alcohol, it's free um, venue. Can you tell us a bit about Attic? Um, the Attic House, we, we purchased the building in 2013 and since then we have been uh, fundraising um, all around the county and um, I'm sure you probably saw most recently we've had a, a huge fundraiser called uh, Longford Go Strictly uh, Come Dancing and it was a huge success and it has enabled us to start phase one of the development. Uh, best of luck, when do you think the building is going to be open? And thank, you for your um, thank you Brian. Um, phase one of the development uh, will be hopefully opening this summer and um, there is an election coming up in the next 18 months so you never know the government might loosen their purse strings and we might get funding for phase two of the uh, attic house thank you here's james donnelly your man from facebook that's a very good description of myself i have to say 
How are you, James? Fantastic. I'm happy to be here. And James, we're just going to talk a little bit about your videos. Um, what made you start them? Well, I'll be honest with you, it was complete boredom in the summer of 2013. I had nothing to do and I stuck up a video. Um, I think the video was how Longford fellas chat up girls. And it didn't really go viral whatsoever, but a few people said, oh, that was really funny. I was like, right, I'll stick up another few. That whole summer, I didn't stick up any. Wasn't bothered. September, stuck up a video about what Irish mammy say. Not based on my own mother, if she's watching. Stuck that video up. That went viral after six hours. It was on 13,000 likes. And people were like, do more, do more. Did more. They went viral. Set up a page. And fast forward two years later, it has 126,000 followers. Come here, come here, come here to me. Come here to me now. Come here. Didn't I just tell you to come here? Oh, girls, come in here now till I get a look at you and we'll get a few photos. Ah, Jesus. Here, you know your man. You know your man down the road. You know your man with the face. You know your man with the two arms, the two legs, the eyes, the nose, the ears. You know your man. Yeah, well, he moved away. How many calories did these aero bars have? Hold on a second now. <sighs> well, you didn't get that attitude from my side of the family anyway. I see you're tagged in a lot of statuses on Facebook. Do you just ignore the hate or do you reply? I tend not to ignore the hate because it kind of fuels me in a way. People need to realise that what I do on the internet is it's a character, it's a persona. Yeah. A lot of people don't agree with what I say, but they still watch it because it's entertainment. It gets people talking, no matter what the issue is about, whether it's good or bad. If you meet me in the person, in person, I'm not going to be like what I'm like on screen. I'm not going to start shouting obscenities and mouthing off. I'm actually very quiet in person, believe it or not. James, where do you get your inspiration for your videos? Um, growing up, um, a lot of my friends' parents told me that one day I'd be a clown. And I thought that myself, to be honest. I always found myself being able to make people laugh very easily, but... I consider myself not very funny at all. I think a lot of my stuff is very cringeworthy. But people seem to like it. And in terms of inspiration, I don't really have a figure of inspiration. Most of the stuff I come up with is literally just there on the spot. I might watch telly and see something. I say, oh, that's after reminding me of something. Or I might see someone else saying something and I might say, that's actually very funny, I'm going to rob it. It's not real, really about inspiration. I could be sitting there and it'll pop into my head and I'll record it and it'll put it up to be no outtakes, to be no edit and it'll literally just be straight up onto the internet. And you've done hundreds of video games. Do you get any money from it? From videos on YouTube, I do, but it's not a lot, contrary to what people believe. Um, in terms of Facebook, you don't get any money from Facebook whatsoever. There's no terms of income with that. The money I make is from going around the country, um, appearing at teenage discos and events, uh, fundraisers, I've done judges for talent shows. I've uh, went to teenage discos, I think in 17 counties now. And I've been doing that for three years. And there is good money to be made from that, literally going in, meeting my fans, getting them photos with them, talking to them, and then leaving. Mm -hmm. And with that work, I've met a lot of celebrities, both Irish and, and foreign. Geordie Shaw, I'm sure you watch it, people from that, yeah. uh, Irish celebrities, um, Joey Essex was probably the most memorable one I was walking with. Well, I wouldn't call what he did walking. Irish teenage discos. Teenage. I swear to God, I'll break our fest. Will you shift my friend? He's playing beat the schlut and he's already shifted 54 people. Come on now, we take 47,000 pictures just outside the place before we actually get in the place and take another 57,000 pictures and then another 30,000 pictures in the chipper. <gasps> um, we're going to take it serious now, James. Um, cyberbullying seems to be a big deal to you. The whole thing with cyberbullying, um, when I first went on social media, I was 13, I went on Bebo. And I thought Bebo was great. You could meet all your friends, talk on it, put up videos, whatever you wanted. And a fake online... Bebo profile started abusing me from when I first went on it, telling me to kill myself, hang myself, all these disgusting things they were saying to me. And I dealt with that for about two years before I went off Bebo. I didn't tell anyone. 
I didn't know who it was, and I didn't see a point because it was an anonymous profile. There was no one that could really find out who it was. But I dealt with that for two years, and when I started making my videos, even though I might not have wanted to be a role model for young people, I got parents and young people messaging me saying that I inspired them to do this. I let help them speak up against bullies, and I found myself a bit surprised about it. And I says maybe there is an issue to be tackled here. Um, we seen you at, we seen you at the Longtron Chalk event against, against homophobic bullying and transphobic bullying. So we, so we presume you'd be voting yes for equality. I would encourage anybody who can vote to vote yes because, in my opinion, it's not right to stop two people who lo love each other from marrying. It's, it's no one else's business, it doesn't affect anyone. All the issues coming up about it that the No campaign are talking about, as in the family ideals, all that, it's irrelevant because the No campaign are saying that every child deserves a mother and a father, which yeah. I think is very insulting towards single parents. Plus, uh, homosexual couples were given rights to adopt kids last year if they're together three years. Yeah. And the No campaign are simply putting out relevant information because even if the vote doesn't go ahead, homosexual couples are still going to be able to adopt kids, so it's irrelevant. Right, thank you James very much. So this has been Gabrielle and you're at Banta Central. So the internet is a strange place and YouTube is even stranger. From card tricks to dancing speakers, people do the silliest things. Some dogs don't want petted. Do you like squeaky toys? Crazy move. Quitting friend style. Margo. Hola. Margo. Hola. Margo. Hola. Margo. <laughs> Seeing eyes. Finley, Finley, where are you going? Finley. 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 Oh my God. Show sure. off. Smooth criminal. Practice makes a uh, what aerobics. Hey man, come here, I gotta tell you something. Dig those moves. How you doing? Don't hate the players. Parents. Tickle, tickle. No, 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 no. Stop it. <laughs> if only all women were this quick. It's magic. I'm going to change this car from red to black. Did it work? No. Hey guys, we're here with Edmund. He's a fifth year in our school, Temple Michael College, but he's also an upcoming rap star in Longford. Welcome to the show, Edmund. Nice to be here. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Okay, can you tell us a bit about your music? Uh, my music is like really inspired by lots of people, like people to like Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, J. Cole, Jay-Z, Nas, all the like really popular like mm -hmm. OG rappers in those days. And um, I have like, it took me a while to like really find my sound and rap. Because like when I started off, I wasn't really that good, and yeah. I also really wasn't worried about the quality of music and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And um, when I was younger, when I was about 13, I wasn't really interested in rap that much until I started listening to people like Kendrick Lamar and Drake and all of them. And I really started to rap, and I started to see like myself up there someday. And I really started like rapping, recording music when mm -hmm. I was like 15 years age, 15 years of age. And um, when I was 15, I put out a song called, like, well, it was a cover, it was called Started From The Bottom, it was ages yeah, yeah. ago, it was about two years ago I put it out, and it was terrible, yeah. I have to say it was terrible, but, and I didn't put, I didn't put a lot of videos out after that, I made a lot, I made a lot of videos after that, but I didn't put out none of them. So yeah. do you think your music changed much? Definitely changed a lot, changed quite a lot. I didn't really know that this song like when i was making this song i just thought like oh nice quality i didn't really know yeah. it was like people are actually going to take notice to it because i've put out other stuff for it and get that big 
of a response like yeah. this one before, but yeah. And your new song, what's that about? Is um, mo- it's called Monster, mm. and it's like kind of like, like it ha- it had a theme behind it. Like if you've seen the video, it's like me yeah. in a forest, yeah. like monster, and it's like it's about like how I progressed, like how I progress in rap. It's like the first few lyrics is 3 a.m. The devil trying to kill me, trying yeah, yeah. to be real, but these haters don't want to feel me. It's like people like people listen to my stuff, but they don't they don't like it. People can get jealous really quickly, and then I say that well, I'll keep making my money, and the money will turn me into a monster. Understand? And there's the most much work going to your music. Yeah, a, a lot of work, a lot of work goes into it. People don't really appreciate how yeah. long it takes to actually produce a song to make the song, to record the song, and to make the video as well. It takes a lot of time to put out that kind of quality. So how long did it take you in full to make the whole film, or the whole music? Um, it took, well, writing the song took me about five days. Yeah. Recording the song, plus mastering and mixing the song took probably about a week. Yeah. Making, like the making, actual like making of the video yeah, took yeah. three days, but editing took around about a week, week or two to actually edit it. So that altogether, maybe around, maybe a m- less than a month. And do you do all the editing yourself? I do most of the song editing, mm. but I don't like my friend, my friend, his name is Eddie B. Yeah. Uh, he does the video editing. Mm. Yeah. Okay, do you have any gigs mm. going up, Edmund? Uh, no, yeah, I have to focus on the Leaving Sir. So after the Leaving Sir in the summer, yeah, I'll have some gigs. Probably I'll make some gigs. Okay, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, Edmund. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to see an exclusive video of Edmund's new song, Monster. <laughs> Five and the devil to try to kill me. Try to be real, but these niggas don't want to feel me. It's the same how you hate on me. You gotta feel me. Jill of Champion and Pop, but it got a million. I should do it for the town. Do it for the town. You don't want to do it. I should do it for your man. I said do it for your man. Love for girls be ignorant, but I just do it for the town. I be rapping since 15. I got nothing that's left to know. Mama calling me every time that I'm out the door. Where you going, man? I'm like, mama, I gotta go. Oh, you need to go to school, cause my mama already know that I'm a real nigga. Shout out to Evan, you're a real nigga. Shout out to Seekins, you're a real nigga. This here's a message to you, real niggas. So now I'm chilling in my room with the pen and paper ripped from my copy. The hottest in the game, and I ain't even made a topic. I ain't need a medal, but I'm sure that I'm a rocket. I'm the hottest in the game, so only God now can stop me, Lord. The money turned me to a monster. The money turned my noodles into pasta. The money turned my tuna in a lobster. They wanna do me, I maneuver like a monster. Act hard, get sweet. Mass talk until they get reaped. Niggas walk miles, so who did that? One in the chamber, that's some slick rap. Slick rap. One in the chamber, that's a slick rap. Slick rap. I got one in the chamber, that's a slick rap. Sitting in the money like a chick. Like a chick. I've been ready for the struggle, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you love me, oh yeah. Like I never heard before, it's cause of money, oh yeah, man. Uh, I need a break like a Kit Kat. Drumming on these niggas like a motherfucking hit hat. Breast sticking at the hill, motherfucker, tic tac. Wanna hit first and I'ma strike before I hit back. The money turned into a monster. The money turned my noodles into pasta. The money turned my tuna in a lobster. They wanna do me, I maneuver like a monster. School of Rock is a new thing in Longford, so earlier this year we sent Meg down to investigate and see what it's all about. Check it out. Hi, I'm Meg Lucas here from Band Central and I'm here with Valerie, the organiser of School of Rock. Tell us, what, how did you come up with this idea? Well, this idea, the School of Rock was an idea to get young people together 
to play music together and get them into groups and socializing together. So we came up with this idea of running the School of Rock. This is the second term of the School of Rock and um, that we're holding here at Temple Michael College um, in Longford. And it's inviting kids of secondary school age from all over the county to come together. And we give them tuition in um, vocal, vocal training and how to sing properly and um, also in percussion and playing drums also we do beginners and advanced um, um, guitar um, tuition but also um, what makes it the school of rock quite unique is that after the hours tuition and um, that the the kids in the school of rock have they also come together to have a jam session so we're kind of getting people into bands to get socializing together and get kind of mixing together and playing music together so that's one of the main aims kind of behind the school of rock and it's been going really well and working really well. We're, we've got about 17 kids, I think, at the moment at it, and it's uh, it's working fantastically. So, so that's kind of that's that's the thinking behind it. Yeah. Uh, what type of what kind of young people would come in here? What would they like play? Yeah, the kids that come in here, they they might be playing a bit. Of some people, kids have very little experience of doing their own um, pl um, playing of their own music. They might be only jamming a little bit, getting their guitar for Christmas or something, and wouldn't have a lot of experience. But then other people would have, um, you know, be really advanced, and they have their they have their own bands already uh, formed, and they, you know, they're really advanced in guitar and bass and, and drumming. So they come from all different levels, but we try and meet them wherever they're at and make sure that we can teach them something and make sure that they they advance as I you know no matter what level they're at. Thank you so much, Valerie, for uh, doing this. What do you think about the School of Rock? Uh, I think it's a great idea actually. Uh, when we were growing up in Longford, in particular, and the younger crew that was always around us, there was nothing like this really going on. It was kind of, you know, to be in a band and to get into a band was hard, and it was twice as hard to get to play anywhere. And to try and get meeting other friends and like minded people was also very hard. And I find in here at the School of Rock that uh, everybody is, is coming in here with the same idea. Um, they all love music, they all love playing music, and they all just want to develop their skills at playing music and play together. Um, it was through my friend, actually, Shane Crossan, who I've known for years, that uh, he actually let me know about this. And uh, I immediately thought it was a fantastic idea, fantastic. Just for, as I said, it's for somewhere to come for musicians to get together with like-minded people to play together, maybe meet and form bands of the future, you know. It's, all well, it starts somewhere, like you know. So it's it's a fantastic idea, fantastic. And one more question: What do you like about the School of Rock? Uh, I like the idea of just literally being able to come in off the streets and into a place, a setting like this, where, as I said, like-minded people uh, around the same ages that have somewhere to come and play music, and as well as that, learn and pick up bits off each other and off their tutors as well, hopefully and maybe take that back to their bands and when they're playing in bands and when they're playing live. So yeah, I think it's a great idea, fantastic. Absolutely Thanks. fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Were you a band before you came here? Well, we were all friends in primary school and we all liked the same kind of music. Then when we started playing instruments, we kind of just came together as a band. And then when School Rock, we heard about School Rock, we decided to come and it helped us develop more as a band and helped us improve. You know her from the Grosse de Tralee, the Voice of Ireland contest and the Eurovision contest. She's also a full-time mammy and you worker. And most importantly, she's here with us today. It's Kathleen Mahan. Hello, guys. How are you? Hello, Kathleen. Um, Kathleen, where do you get all your energy? Um, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out that uh, myself. Uh, it's been a pretty busy year, to be honest, but uh, it's been all worth it. And what I'd always say is that I take everything day by day because if you think of all the things you have to do ahead you can get a bit overwhelmed but if you take it day by day and tick your daily tasks off you, you, you get through it then but uh, yeah it's been busy. Which is your favourite part the Euro song contest the voice or the 
voice of Ireland? The Rosa Trilly, even, Jake. <laughs> what did I say? The voice of Trilly. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's a, it's a, it's hard to pick because they were all very, very different. Um, you know, so I, I'll go through all three of them because on a personal yeah. level, they are all different. And um, the Rosa Trilly for me was definitely the start of the confidence that I needed yeah. to pursue the next two, I suppose. So on a very personal level, becoming the, the Longford's Rose was that, that kind of boost that I needed. Um, the, the Voice of Ireland was just a fantastic experience. You know, um, you really got to put your own spin on cover songs and it was busy, it was all go and it, it yeah. took up a lot of time actually, believe it or not. I was, um, I was <coughs> up and down to Dublin constantly and going for rehearsals. So, you know, I got to meet such a, a, a broad range of people as well in the other contestants. And again, no more than the Rosa Tralee, you make friends for life at it, mm. like so. On a really social level, the voice of the voice of Ireland was fantastic, and then the Euro song, um, being that it is an original song, you you don't feel. And I came into it, you know, as a, as a singer basically. Yeah. Who and Charlie said, okay, what's your interpretation of this song? So on a creative level. Um, the Eura song w would have been one of my favourites, but uh, they're all my favourites in, in their own way. They've all got different different reasons, I suppose. Mm. And Colleen, have you any future plans now for this year? Well, I plan to keep keep being busy. Um, I actually don't know what to do and I haven't got a lot on. I do like to keep really busy and I suppose in the next few months, I have taken a little bit of a break now since everything has wrapped up because it has been all go since Christmas. I was doing the Strictly mm. Come Dancing as well and I had my rose duties and, you know, I had an awful lot of stuff going on then with your song and the Voice of Ireland. So I've taken a few weeks break, but now I'm really getting my head down, I suppose, and trying to think of what the next step is. So I suppose I plan to do as many um, collaborations as possible because originally I would be a session singer, yeah. which is basically um, where you kind of step into projects and, and you know do a little bit of studio work or a little bit of gigging. Um, so I really, in the next year, I would like to find what I would like to do and, and you know, front in a band scenario, I suppose, again, and start writing my own stuff. But um, I definitely hope to collaborate with uh, Charlie McGettigan again in the next year and collaborate with as many people as possible and find out what it is that I'd really like to do myself as an artist, I suppose. And I suppose, Kathleen, we heard you're playing at Hype, so... Yes, I am indeed. That should be fun to see. I am indeed. I'm going to be playing at Hype with a, a band I've played with for many years called the Groove Addicts. So uh, we're really looking forward to that and well, I might actually get some song suggestions off you guys because you'll know what you want to hear so <laughs> I can take suggestions on board but yeah I'm really looking forward to playing Hype as well. It's a fantastic um, you know, event for young people all around the country mm. so yeah I'm really looking forward to it. And do you have any mo role models? I find role models every day in people and I admire people. In I'm a real people person and you know, yeah, I've picked up a lot of role models in the in the last year. One being Marie Walsh, our current Rose of Tralee, and mm -hmm. Charlie McGettigan as a songwriter and an artist. Uh, but I in everyday life, I you know I admire people, and you learn from the people that you are around. And I've been very fortunate to have been surrounded by some really really talented, um, you know, intelligent people in the last year. Um, so yeah, and my family, of course, they're always they're always my rock and my friends. So yeah. yeah. They've all been great, and they're they're all my role models for different reasons. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kathleen, for coming in. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. And we're going to play on, out on your song, Anybody Got a Shoulder. Fantastic. Lovely. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you very much for having me. Anybody got a shoulder I could cry Anybody got a hand to hold Anybody warm I'm feeling cold Anybody want to hear the reason why Anybody got a shoulder I could cry Romantic fool Rules are rules in love and war You knew just what they were But you wouldn't see And now he's gone 
Wondering was in his mind It wasn't meant to be Anybody got a shoulder I could cry Anybody got a hand to hold Anybody warm, I'm feeling cold Anybody want to hear the reason why Anybody got a shoulder I could cry It's clearer now How could I have missed the signs Not read between the lines I should have known I'll know again When thinking I am but the only one Anybody got a shoulder I could cry Anybody got a hand to hold Anybody warm I'm feeling cold Anybody want to hear the reason why Anybody got a shoulder I could cry Was it just a game? Thought you felt the same as I did Anybody got a shoulder I could cry Anybody got a hand to hold? Anybody warm, I'm feeling cold Anybody want to hear the reason why? Anybody got a shoulder I could Anybody got a shoulder I could Anybody got a shoulder I could Sorry, folks, the show has came to an end. What was your favourite part, Gabby? I don't know, Jack. The whole show was fun, but I suppose the interview with Edmund was good. What about you, Jack? What was your favourite part? My favourite part was Jake with RudeTube. Of course, Jake, of course. Make sure you tune in next week to Ballymartin, Lanesborough and Granard. Playing us out is Nicole Raftree and Tony Hart with their band from the School of Rock. They'll be singing Seven Nation Army. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from us both. This has been Gabby and Jake and Banta Central.
Draw. 